Hi, I'm Shirley Jones, and this is Gemma Winger's Hollywood. Academy Award nominee for The Godfather, so that's probably what you're best known for. Boy, I'm pretty good, yeah. Yeah, and four-time Golden Globe Award nominee. Yeah, I never win anything. It's just like getting awards and no jobs. I'd rather get a job. They're going to give me a piece of glass. I, know, I, I know. can't eat glass. You eat regular oh, nice. <laughs> God bless. Thank you. God bless you. You take care. How about a kiss goodbye? Adios. Hello, I'm Martin Landau. Hi, I'm Florence Henderson, and you're watching Jimma Winger's Hollywood. I'm Gemma Winger, and you're watching Gemma Winger's Hollywood. I'm here at the International Christian Film and Music Festival in Orlando, Florida. I am so honored to be nominated for four awards. I received a nomination for Beauty for Ashes and Gemma Winger's Hollywood, as well as Best Television Host, and my music video received an official selection. So I just feel really honored to be here and and God is just blessing me, and so many people have such amazing testimonies. It's such an honor to be here, and you stay tuned because you are not going to want to miss these testimonies. Up next, I have Marty Jean-Louis. He's the CEO of the International Christian Film and Music Festival, and God has used him mightily. God is raising him up, and he is one who wants to glorify the Lord. He has covered this place in prayer, this festival in prayer, and it is a happy place, just as he said it would be. Stay tuned. This is Marty Jean-Louis, and I'm really honored to be able to interview him. He is the CEO of the International Christian Film and Music Festival in Orlando, Florida. And first of all, I just want to thank you for giving me three official nominations and one official selection. It just meant so much to me, and I want to thank you. But this is your baby. You thought of this. This is your vision. How did it come to pass? Oh my gosh, it's such a long story, but let me tell you this, I fought God for three years, not to, two years, not to do this, because I didn't want to do it. Um, but there was a need, and you know, God will always win. Whatever God needs to get done, will get done. Um, so, yeah. Well, there is a need because when I go out there with my shows and I try to promote them, there's a spirit of darkness that immediately comes against me. And even certain people will share them and certain people won't. They, some people don't want to be associated with something Christian because then they're not going to fit in with the world. But it's like here I feel so accepted and so loved and so appreciated because it's of the same spirit. Absolutely. I mean, um, one of the things for this place is we start in prayer. It is the foundation of this festival, is prayer, prayer, prayer. We invite God to be part of what we're doing. Otherwise, I don't want to be a part of it, <laughs> you know? So, and I think people feel it. I get that all the time. People say, I feel the presence of God here. I do. And that's what we pray for. We pray for that, that people can feel His presence. And I see that you have a prayer room and there's praise and worship and that you openly glorify the Lord and you're not ashamed of the gospel. Not at all. I mean, if you think about it, International Christian Film Festival is very bold. You don't, it is. <laughs> we don't have to even say what we do. The name itself says it all. So we are not ashamed at all. We are boldly uh, uh, calling the name of Jesus right here in Orlando. Now, you have really grown over the years and expanded. Talk about that, and what has it involved? A lot of work. <laughs> I, I, I hear you. Absolutely. I mean, um, I never set out to grow, really. I let God lead whatever He wants. He wants five people, great. He wants 5,000 people, that's great. So you let him lead. Uh, that's how we, we go. Uh, our team, we're like, God is in control. What do you want, God? Whatever you want, that's what we want. 
That's amazing. You know, you screened Jim O'Ringer's Hollywood yesterday, so I was there. But the gentleman who was doing the screening, the technical part, he got totally blessed. And he said that you guys had gone to his church to say, hey, we need volunteers. And he came and volunteered. And we had like some connections with uh, Ted Barron Movie Guide. And he's going to the inner, uh, he goes to um, uh, Florida University, Central Florida University. And Ted Bear is going to be speaking there. And he's with Movie Guide, and he also promotes Christian films and movies and television shows. So he just really got blessed and was really excited. It was a divine appointment, and that only comes with prayer. Absolutely. I mean, that's what this is about, right? The, those divine connections that only God can do, right? So we, we provide the place and we let God do the rest. It's all about Him, right? If we can allow God to lead, a lot of great things can happen in our lives. I am so impressed and I just feel so at home because that's what I've done all my life is just preach the Lord and not be ashamed and whoever is going to accept it will and whoever is going to reject it. Now, how did you get saved? I'm still working on it. You're being saved. It's a process. I get it. So, um, I mean, I grew up as a PK, and, uh, but that doesn't make you saved. In fact, I think it's the opposite. You know, we, th we tend to be rebellious, which I was. Um, I really feel like um, I was saved when I got married. My wife really helped bring me to God. So it was your parents' prayers, though, that covered you and brought you back around. But I see the blessings of the generation on, on this whole thing, on your festival. It's so divinely appointment. And I got to tell you, it was like I really needed to have that acknowledgement. I'm over in California. And there's not a lot of love in California. And th there's a lot of competition and there's a lot of people who don't like you if you're doing something good and so there's a lot of persecution but I just felt like this was God giving me a special kiss giving me the honor that I kind of deserve for all this hard work and blood sweat and tears so when God asked me to do this and I ran away like Jonah <laughs> but I, I eventually cave in you know, and I never went to any other film festivals. So I didn't know what festivals are supposed to look like, right? So, but one thing I did know is that we wanted people to be happy. We wanted to create an atmosphere where there's so much love, right? And so much joy and people are just happy to see each other and be here and just so much love. And, um, and we pray and pray and pray on that. And, and that's the feedback that we get all the time. People are so friendly. People are so nice and joyful. And, and I'm so grateful that that's exactly what God is doing here. This is so amazing, even this red carpet, because I know like I am squished like a sardine and everybody's telling me to move over and like then you get moved to a different spot and, and then everybody has such an attitude and it's just so nice to be free that you're not getting persecuted for what you're trying to do. No, no, absolutely not. Absolutely not. We love it. We proclaim the name of Jesus throughout the entire hotel. Uh, in fact, we have a prayer room, like you said, we have a prayer team going around praying for people. In fact, before we even start, they went around the building to pray. Every room to pray. Every chair to pray. <laughs> you have such an amazing spirit. I mean, just seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. But I think it's so interesting. You didn't seek to, I want a festival. I want to meet famous people. I want to exalt myself. It's like God called you. God chose you. God told you to do this. And you were being obedient. Not that you wanted to even do it, but you were being obedient. It's like Moses, don't send me. I don't want to go. 
I feel that way too. It's like, I, you know, some people just love doing this. I, I love doing it, but I'm being obedient to God when I do it. Does that make sense? Absolutely. I knew how much work it would take to do this. <laughs> so that's that. And I knew when God called me to do something and I felt it in my heart, it would be big. From the very beginning, I felt it. And that's probably one of the reasons why I, I didn't want to do it. Uh, because um, I'm an introvert. So am I. <laughs> <laughs> so so I, don't, I like to hide in my little special place. So do I. And just be happy there. <laughs> Amen. Preach it, brother. <laughs> so, but you know, when God wants you to do something, He will provide everything that you need even the skill set and those that you don't have he will bring the right people around you so that he can accomplish what he wants to accomplish you know i'm like the shyest person ever for me to ask somebody for an interview it takes so much it takes so much and so i'm so grateful to you because you said yes so i, I just praise the lord but you have a lot of sponsors talk about your sponsors oh we love our sponsors we absolutely love our sponsors uh we have pure flakes 24 flakes the Light University. I mean, so many more. I don't want to start naming names because I can forget one. But, but we absolutely love our sponsors because they help support this. It really costs quite a bit to put this together and they help us out a little bit. And they're happy to be here to support Christian filmmakers and, and this ministry, as I call it. This is like the Academy Awards for Christian filmmakers and producers and directors and actors and actresses. It, it truly is because there's nothing like this. Oh, thank you for saying that. I really don't know because I've never, I've, still today, I've never been to another Christian film festival. Uh, the only festival that I went to just a few years ago was the Cannes Film Festival. Oh, I went to Cannes, yeah. Yeah, so... That's different. It is very different. And I wanted to see what are they doing? How can I make this better and run better? Uh, so that's the reason why I went. Um, did you pick up any tips? I did. I you did? Like what? Well, there are a lot of little things um, that we have trouble with. We wanted to see how they did it and what else that we can implement here that would benefit not us but the attendees anything you want to share or? nothing nothing <laughs> specific that i that but a lot of little things a lot of little things organizational wise and and things that we could do better we're always looking to do better that's why i listen a lot to people as they're talking, they have advice. They say, hey, you, you know, why don't you do this or do that? And I listen and I listen. I make notes because we want to be better. Exactly. The Bible says there's wisdom in many counselors as well as safety in many counselors. And it doesn't hurt to take the time to listen and God will quicken your heart and you're going to know what the truth is. You are a humble man of God. Would you just pray for those listening right now and just minister to them because there are people who have a great call of God on their life. They're running from that call and they need that strength and that anointing to keep on going. They need people in their lives to help them and just pray that God would bring it all together as you have just covered your event in prayer. Just cover those listening in prayer. I will do the best that I can. Okay. That's why I have a prayer team because they do such a great job. I'm not uh, part of that, but I will pray as you ask me to. Heavenly yeah. Father, I just want to thank you for the opportunity to be here. Lord, for those that are listening, that are perhaps running away like I was, we ask that you fill their hearts so that they know with 100% certainty that it is you that is calling them and that they make a 180 and accept the call. And they will know that they will find joy once they do. Lord, we just want to thank you we ask that you equip them and give them everything that they need. Lord, we thank you in advance in Jesus' name. Amen.
Amen. Can I say a prayer for you? Yes. Oh, God, I just thank you, Lord, for Marty. I thank you, Lord, that you are raising him up higher and higher, and you are raising up this festival to glorify your name and honor your name because you are speaking to filmmakers and directors and writers and producers and actors and actresses and singers, Father God. You are speaking to them to do original and creative projects, and now they are able to receive the honor that they are due. And as they have glorified you, you are going to honor them and bless them. I pray for Marty. I pray for this festival. I pray for increase in your anointing, increase in your finances. I thank you, Lord, that this festival will increase more and more and more. I pray blessing and prosperity in Marty's hands, Father God. I thank you, Lord, that you are opening the doors and that you are going to open more and more doors. You're going to give him an even bigger platform. There are going to be international networks, Father God, that he's going to be on. And I thank you, Lord, that you're raising up your children who have honored you, who have glorified your name, who have not compromised and who are not afraid to proclaim your gospel. I thank you, Lord, for Marty. I thank you for his life, for his family, Father God, for his praying ancestors, Lord Jesus. And I see that everything is coming to fruition. Hallelujah. Even prepare for that mighty harvest, that mighty outpouring of his spirit in these last days. Thank you, Lord, for this mighty man of God. And it's such an honor to truly interview him. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Marty. This is Rich Swingle, and he is the co-lead in the movie Second Chances. Tell us about it. Yes, this was filmed in northern Idaho uh, by these two brothers, and the, the one had a, a yard and garden business kind of a thing, and he heard that there was a snowstorm in Seattle, and he took his truck, which had a snowplow on it, and he, he made tens of thousands of dollars over a weekend, but he wouldn't work on a Sunday. And they used that money to create second chances. And they're, they got the training they needed. These are, they're not, the older one's not a teenager, but the younger one is. Anyway, these are young people that just had a vision to make a movie. They got the training they needed. They brought in the people they needed. We are all now... Num uh, what is it? On the uh, Kevin Bacon scale, we're all one because there was a guy on the set who'd worked with Kevin Bacon. So, uh, I mean, it was, it was profound. And they did such great work. And we were just thrilled, thrilled to be a part of it. Had a, a really strong gospel message. What was that? Yeah, so the lead character... He has a moment where there's, I don't know how much, I, I don't want to give too many spoilers, but there's a disaster early on, and his friend dies, and he blames himself, the lead character, who is a, a young man. And so he's just distraught. He goes to stay with his uncle's family, and I'm the business partner of the uncle. And so I, I kind of strike up a, a mentorship with this young man, and uh, and. Yeah, he ends up giving his life to the Lord. That's a spoiler alert, but, you know, I think that's one. It's a good spoiler that's alert. That's one worth sharing. We yeah. need to know that. So what are these second chances? Right. So his character, you know, he feels like he needs to start over after his friend died and he feels such responsibility. And my character, I don't want to give too much away f with that because that is a spoiler that comes quite late in the plot, but, but my character needs a second chance as well. And so it's just a beautiful story of, of these two folks, uh, uh, well, me, and then this young person and, and kind of speaking into each other's lives and just really profound and powerful. So God is giving beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. So he's causing all things to work together for good. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, it's bringing scripture to life, truly. Yeah. That's amazing. How did you get this part? I auditioned for... No, no, no. They reached out to me. They they went to... How did they hear about you? They had seen some movies that I was in, and they reached out through IMDb Pro and reached out to my, my agent. 
And so my agent said, are you interested? And yes, I am. And yeah, so it went like that. Congratulations. That's wonderful. You know, it's fantastic that so many Christian films have really good actors in them. Well, praise God. <laughs> no, it's true. I mean, I think initially Christian films, um, some of the acting left a lot to be desired. But now the acting in these films is really at a level with the top actors and actresses in the secular world. Mm. Oh, well, I, I, I believe that is the case. I think the, the quality is definitely rising on, on every level. Technology, uh, we were just uh, screened Mayflower 2, which we were a part of and they have what almost 800 special effects it takes place on mars and and uh, in the future here and it's just mind-boggling and there's a whole space chase through the canyons of mars and and it was it was just wonderful and refreshing to see that kind of work put into a, a film with a Christian message. And I think, too, that God has been training his people, both in acting as well as technically, that we are rising up now because we've been trained. We have experience. Absolutely. Yeah, I just was speaking with Bob Sines, who's here, and he is a script doctor for uh, Hallmark. He's written a lot of his own productions. I think he's been on 16 or 17, worked on the scripts. And so he's working at a very high level to get the scripts to that next level. So I was, I was just overjoyed to get his book because I'm always working with young people, and I have to recommend these script writing books that have all, you know, the sex and nudity. And now that you see the nudity in a book about screenwriting, but it's talking Swearing, about, cursing. Yeah, and just about graphic scenes and uh, as they're examples of the storytelling. So, so wonderful to get my hands on a book. I know, and just even reading those books, it's like that spirit of lust can just get exactly. on you. I mean, it's yeah. not all about screenwriting. It's about destroying you spiritually. No, absolutely. So I, I'm thrilled to see Christians rising up in their giftings and doing great work. That's fabulous. Do you think these are the Academy Awards of the Christian filmmaking? <laughs> that's what they say. That's what they, that's what they call this one, the Academy Awards for Christians, yeah. Well, I didn't know that they said it. I just said it. I, it just came to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the, I think this is the biggest uh, Christian film festival in, I, I, maybe in the world. I don't know. I don't want to speak out of turn. But I have to tell you a story. Because Joshua Carpenter, he, he and I were talking to Bob Sines. And Joshua, Joshua goes, you look so familiar. So tell, tell why I look familiar to you. Oh, <laughs> We were over at the table talking to a few people, and I go, your face looks so familiar. And I was like, he was like, I don't know. He goes, oh, I know why. I just finished your artwork. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we just finished Second Chances artwork like three weeks ago. So uh, we're working on a release for mid or late summer time frame that we're working on right now for the release of Second Chances. And what kind of distribution? You want to clarify that a little more? What kind I, of I mean, how movie do you... distribution. <laughs> movie theaters or, uh, you know, I don't know what they're doing nowadays. Yeah, uh, yeah right. Well, for this one in particular, um, um, well, through the process of distribution, you know, number one, is there a potential theatrical? Is there a potential TV? Is there a potential SWA client that we uh, pre-solicit? And then from there, we work it through the cable satellite and the transactionals. And then hopefully there's some SVA potentials and then eventually down to the AVOD and you know, home videos in there potentially. So it just depends, you know, nothing's guaranteed. That's the importance of writing good stories, uh, you know, and Second Chances is about Second Chances and the way that he did it. Um, you know, I'll just leave it there. I won't, I won't spoil anything for you guys. But to say <laughs> at the distribution starts, the idea of distribution needs to start way before you even write the script. So, Talking about the audience that you're trying to reach? Yes. Well, just in general, how do you want to potentially look? At the end of the day, this, if this is the movie business as well, you have to think about the business aspect as well, right? I mean, let's talk about it. I mean, Jesus had a treasure for a reason, right? And everyone watching, you know, uh, Jenkins, The Chosen right now, you see, you know, right, that Matthew, I believe it was Matthew, you know, that he had a and counting background, right? And there's a reason because you have to have money to run a ministry. You have to, I agree. You have to have money to run a business. You don't make movies in hopes of, I don't care if I make money. Well, the, 
well, then you may not make another movie, right? Unless you have to live, you have to eat. Yeah, look, I mean, like Mr. Jenkins said a great job with this crowdfunding, uh, but to say it right, so the start, it, you, you start it with at the very beginning with the end in mind, right? So you write a good story, and at the end of the day, you know, it's from there with a package it really well, you know, and then just from there get it in front of our buyers. So I won't spoil anything. I'm not giving anything away. I'll throw a few nuggets out there for you guys. But <laughs> if anything, tomorrow morning, 10 to 12 is our distribution panel. But this guy right here, that's how I saw his face ago. Why don't I know your face? <laughs> oh, we just finished your artwork. So we put them on the front cover. Divine appointment. That's yeah. awesome. So cool. So yes, second chances. It'll be coming out. Uh, uh, late summer. Uh, we're still working on the details right now, but super excited for you, man. Oh. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Thank you so much, both of uh, you. I appreciate it. I just have one last story, which is, and this is not too much of a spoiler alert, but we were, um, you know, I, I don't think they found this till the day of, but there were these two trees just fallen in a storm. They just fell in such a way that here are these two characters with with their lives their lives have fallen apart and there they are in between these two fallen trees talking about life and talking about how Jesus is the only way to restore a life so just little miracles like that along the way I, I see that every time I'm working on a Christian film it's it's I can say one thing that they did right in the movie is you know in every great story uh, throughout the hero's journeys you know there's a hero and there's a guide and so he plays the guide in the story. He's the mentor. So, yeah. so there's a great storytelling, and that's why he. So, if you don't know who this face is, he's the mentor. He's the guide in the story, for the for the young boy in the movie. Yeah. Where did you learn all of this? <laughs> <laughs> who taught you? You have to be a student of life. You can go to film school, or you can get your hands dirty, <laughs> right? And you got your hands really dirty, is what I'm hearing. Get your hands dirty. You know, I mean, that's in a story myself, but we're here for him today. So, but second chances, he, he, he's the hero of this, or he's the mentor, the, the guide in the story. And you want a really good guide. This is a good guide. He takes them fishing. Yeah. How cool is that? <laughs> I've never been, so it must be really cool. I'll give him fish. I could tell by that accent. Where are you from? From the country, of outside of Charlotte, North Carolina. Oh, oh wonderful. Beautiful. Yeah. Hilarious. Good fishing out there. Yeah. So it's good that you put fishing in the movie. Yeah. You can absolutely. tell a drama, or you can put a theme to it, and you put fishing to it. Well, so he know, can relate. Yeah, and if you know the distributor likes to fish, put fishing in your movie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, the the Why didn't I think of that? At the end of the day, if you're using this, if you want to be fishers of men, there Amen. you go. There you go. Yeah, no, that's good analogy. That in mind. Yeah. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. What an amazing event. We talked to some fabulous people. God's word is going forth. It's planting seed in your heart, and it's going to bring forth a harvest of blessings. As you hear the word of God, God is going to bless you and increase you more and more. I'm Gemma Winger, and thank you for watching Gemma Winger's Hollywood.